Hey guys, good morning. It's Megan and I'm coming in to check in with you guys and see how everybody's doing. I um, have been, I'm wanting to come in for a couple of days now and talk to you about some tips and things. Um, you know, it's funny because I um, talk to so many different people all throughout the weeks and um, always coming up with some really good things like, oh, I should talk about that because this person struggles with it. And I feel like if this person struggles with it, then more people must struggle with that. So um, one of the things that I hear a lot um, or people ask me about a lot is being stuck. And um, I've been stuck so many times, let me just tell you. And I think that it's always different for everybody. Like there's so many ways to like level up, right? And I love that I, I named this group Next Level Living because that could be different for everyone, right? So depending on where you are, there's always a way to get better, right? There's always just ways to continue to get better on this health and fitness journey, whether it's with your fitness or your mindset or the food or whatever, right? Like there's so many different facets of it. So I wanted to kind of go through some stuff with you. And I also wanted to share you know, just some really good general information. I just, I, I need to, uh, let's see, I am going to put on do not disturb on this phone because that, no, those noises just distract me and I get so much more accomplished anyways. Okay, so I have some notes and I want to make sure that I cover all the grounds. I also have my book open because I um, want to kind of correlate some different things with you. Um, so, hey, Stacy. A big, um, and, I, and I wanted, I should have put these in order how I was thinking too. Um, so we'll just kind of run down the list, okay? So when you get, you struggle, right, in your, in your, um, uh, the first thing I always think about is like what your activity level is, hey Stacy, um, and, and what you're eating, right? And that's like a huge part of things. People don't realize that outside of your health and fitness, right, you're also active. And so that counts as far as your daily expenditure, right? And so the basic laws of, you know, eating and nutrition are energy in, energy out. And when I mean energy, I mean food. So in order to function properly, you have to have the right mix of food coming in for the right activity going out. And if you have extra activity going out, then you need extra food coming in, extra energy coming in. Because what happens is if you don't have that right ratio, then you're going to run out of gas. And what happens is maybe you're not necessarily like physically hungry or getting a growly stomach or something, but your body will do other things in order to take energy from somewhere else. So guess what happens if you are trying to lose weight? and you are not eating enough of the right foods or enough food based on your activity, then your energy is going to be taken from your muscles and saves the fat for last. And what so what happens is your body thinks it's like starving, so it hoards the fat cells because that's going to keep you sustained and, and living, right, is that stuff. So it goes after your muscles and your organs and other things first. So you won't lose weight. You won't continue to, to see that prog progression because you're not getting enough energy in for your activities out, okay? So um, number one I had was how much are you eating? Um, so when you're stuck at a plateau, you kind of need to say to yourself, okay, um, how many calories, it, you know, it's a couple different things when it comes to how much food you're eating, right? When I start somebody off with the basics, I usually don't rely a ton on calories because I really want them to be just more consistent in the beginning and eating a healthy lifestyle. But let's just say you've been at it a while, okay? For the sake of argument, you've been at it a while. So now we sort of need to drill into what it is you're eating and how much, right? If, um, you um, had started at a certain calorie amount. It was like, you know, uh, said to you by my fitness pal or whatever you're using for like an app, let's say, um, you know, you can't eat that way forever. 
so that's one thing to look at, right? Um, the really awesome thing about, uh, so like taking my journey for example, um, and I mentioned I get, I've gotten stuck a lot throughout my journey, right? First it was weight loss for me after I had my baby. And then after I got to my pre baby weight, then I was like, okay, I know I can do better. And I had to adjust things. And then, you know, you do such and such program and then you have to adjust things. And then when I discovered, um, the nutritional component with beach body programs, like I was always into the beach body programs, insanity, P90X, you name it. I, I did them all, but I didn't realize that there was a nutritional component really that went to that. And I also had the mindset that if I worked hard enough, that I could eat whatever I want. That was my mentality for a really long time. So it wasn't until I got more educated on nutrition that I actually, you know, figured out all this stuff too. So once I figured out the nutritional component that went with that specific program, I was able to say, okay, there's a calculation here and I'm doing this program that is like, 40 minutes or 30 minutes long, and it tells me exactly how many calories I should eat, and it even gives me a sample meal plan. Bingo, I lost two pant sizes in 60 days, okay? And then I stopped progressing, okay? Because your body changes, and you need to change with your body too. And so there are, again, different reasons why you change, okay? So going a little bit longer into my journey, um, I started to realize more and more and more that the nutrition was the key, and it was not the fitness part. It, you know, it does play a role. The fitness part does play a role. But if you want to continue to reach your goals, nutrition is going to change your body more than anything else. Okay. So, um, as, uh, like I said, I progressed a little bit further and I started to be interested in learning more and more and more about the nutrition for, for me personally, really. So I decided to get a certification precision nutrition certification. So, so many of you guys know that a couple of, you know, anyways, that I am precision nutrition certified exercise nutrition essentials of sports and exercise nutrition. So I actually can help people who are just getting started. I can, there's, there's, um, people, people, you know, that are like you and I generally right? that are, um, ready to go to the next level and Then I can actually help people. If you want to do a bikini competition or you're a sport a athlete athlete, and I can help you with your nutrition. There's several levels, like there's level one nutrition, there's level two, and then there's level three, which are elite athletes and stuff like that. So when I first got into this certification, I was like, so worried that I was going to discover in my textbooks and my learning that what Beachbody had was going to be so off the mark from what real certified exercise nutritionists were doing to help people. And so I was like, as soon as I got the book, I raced to the place in the book where you figured out how much food you should eat. And um, I will just tell you right now that um, it's exactly the same. It's just written in a different way. Uh, there's a little bit more science behind it, but it's exact. So basically, Beachbody has taken out the science and the math for us. You know, and so the like, layman person can just follow what the book says and do it, right? Um, so that was huge, okay? So I want you guys to know, for anybody that's following a Beachbody program, and then nutrition guide that you can be rest assured and happy to know that it's actual expert science that's giving you that calculation in your uh, program. Okay. So when you're following that, you're good, right? You're good. Okay. So you're taking your uh, weight, if you will. Okay. And you're multiplying it by your activity level, which is uh, sort of a number and it usually ranges depending on where you are from a sedentary person that has minimal exercise to a moderately active person to a very active person so like if you are sitting at your desk job you know you might multiply your weight on a lower number so let's just use 10 for example like kind of sitting around so it's like I have to get my calculator out here you know I'm just trying to do some basics for you guys just so that you get an, sort of an idea okay um, I don't go into too much math here but I just want you to realize that there's a big deviation okay so if we take 200 pounds times 10 you get 2,000 okay so that's 2,000 um, calories and then you have to uh, multiply that or, or, or rather add, let's say, uh, your calories that, or your, yeah, your calories that you, so your workout, let's say you, you, um, you have an average of 400 calories that you're work, working out your workout calories, right? So right there, that's 2,400. And then in order to be at a weight loss um, deficit, 
it's um, 750. That's about a pound a week is average, is, is really average. Um, that's a lot too though. So you, if that's too much, you can always back it down to 500. Um, so if let's just say for 2400, we're at 2400, we're gonna minus 750 for our calorie deficit. So a 200 pound person should at least be eating 1650 calories if you have a desk job, okay? So, and you're working out. Let's just use that as a baseline, okay? So that should give you like kind of a thing, right? And now for me, for example, now I don't weigh 200 pounds, right? I weigh about 140, 145 is my fluctuation. I've got some muscle. That also means I need to eat more. So, um, and I also teach classes, so I'm active. And so my um, calorie range is um, anywhere from 18 to 2,000 calories a day because I am that active and I have muscle mass that I need to support and that kind of stuff. So that's the other thing too, is you're, if you're alert, looking to build or have, maintain lean muscle, you need to eat for it, right? Okay, so that's just the math, okay? There's other steps that we can go to. If you're really interested in working with me and figuring this out, there are like next steps that we can figure out, like your body type and things like that. Um, but again, when I first start working with someone, I really just want to get like a baseline basics with them, okay? So figuring out how many calories you need to eat is huge, okay? That's number one. And then number two is that activity level. So what are you doing for activity level, right? And how much, um, you know, time are, are you, you know, you're going to, um, you know, and activity levels have to be like, you know, going to the gym or working at home and then your work schedule. So you need to think about that too. Um, maybe you need to increase calories in order to maintain what you've got going on in your activity level. Okay. Um, I just want to make sure I, I broke those two. I want to say that as a separate point <laughs> that I'm thinking about. So um, making sure that you're eating enough. So how many calories are you eating? And then like, what are your activity levels? Are, what are those at? Okay. So, and then has that changed for you? Like, so sometimes if you're at a plateau, th these are things that you look at as time goes on. So like, you're going to, you're going to have plateaus. You're going to go peak, stop, peak so that it's normal to plateau okay so there's just things to look at this kind of like your checklist right so what's going on in your life what kind of things have changed um you know what are you eating for calories and how how many calories are you eating rather okay because number three is quality over the calorie number too we always always want to choose quality over th think about the nutrients and the vitamins that you're consuming like are you just eating like one type of thing, um, you know, uh, those are always things that we can look to change. Um, I have, um, we have a hierarchy list of foods, let's say, for example, a list of proteins that you can choose from. Um, and the higher uh, lit food on lists, the better those are for you, the more cleaner they are. If you're going to go down to the bottom of the list and you're picking processed foods, like, you know, maybe you're eating portion controlled sizes of like tortillas or things like that or um lots of bread i do eat bread and i do eat pastas but i don't eat them every single day so or not yeah yes so it, i will vary that stuff so think about that too like um you can eat something like chicken breast every single day because that's a great lean meat but something like um like let's Day. There, I can always tell, like, for example, when I make the enchiladas, I love the enchiladas, but the low carb wraps that I use, they're definitely processed. Um, they're better than like your generic tortilla, but when I eat them a few days in a row, I notice a change in my body. Okay, so those are things to look out for too. Things like beans and potatoes, those are good carbs for you to have. I'm not saying never to have the other stuff, but vary that stuff, right? Um, same thing with like um, sodium. Um, I love this like little these little ham slices, um, and and it's an overall good piece of meat that I get at the at the far, at the grocery store. But it's got a lot of sodium in it. Okay, so then there's things you have to give up sometimes. If it's a low sodium meat, then maybe it's filled with something else, right? So it's not that you can never have those things. But think about it: Are you eating the salty ham every day? Are you eating these salty pickles every day, or adding extra? something right so be be 
writing down and logging what you're what you're doing so you can look back and be like god i'm on the toilet a lot today what did i eat yesterday right like stuff like that so quality over just those calories right that's a big one is is what is what is your food made up of um you know a, a big red flag that i always uh, that always comes up to me is someone that says that they drink um like just protein shakes and stuff like that and i love the idea of having a shake but for the convenience of it and stuff like that. But so often that stuff is just full of junk and you'd be better off just having a couple of hard boiled eggs if you need something that's like fast, right? Um, so I'd much rather see you eating food than compromising your nutrition by something that's quick and easy, right? Um, because if we're really determined to make a change, then we really have to, you know, step it up, especially we've been at it for a little bit, you know, okay, I'm ready for the next level now. I know I need to prep. I know that that's the key to my success. And so now I'm going to look at the quality of the food that I'm eating in order to reach my next level goal. Okay. Um, number four, I have workout routine. Like what are you doing? Right. Um, uh, you know, and how much time are you spending at it? I personally don't believe in spending hours at the gym. I don't think that's necessary. Even when I was competing for my competitions, did I spend hours at the gym? I still was doing body based and I was still doing my workouts at home and all of that kind of stuff. They had me doing some extra things, but it really wasn't a lot of extra things. And so, um, for me, like the more efficient, the better. I mean, the 30 minute workout programs that we have where you can just get in, get out, get it done, um, for any, you know, like or dislike, you know, as far as yoga, um, full body workouts today, I did a full body strength training. And um, that's so much different than just like doing lifting arms, lifting legs, or like being on the treadmill. Like I just can't even imagine going back to going and being in the gym or the elliptical and then all that you know, just standing there in that steady state. Um, another really cool thing about some of the dynamic programs that we have that are more efficient is like they are, they're meant, uh, they're, they're created on purpose. So you follow a workout calendar and they are like certain workouts each day and it's, it's on purpose that they're created and that you do them in that that particular order. Um, so like there might be a hit one day or there might be a heavy weightlifting day or there might be like a steady state cardio one day or whatever, right? So it's all, a whole bunch of different, it's set up and created on purpose so that if you follow the efficient workout, let's say it's 30 to 40 minutes a day and you eat the nutrition plan that comes it's just a home run, right? Because you're already a part of, of my coaching one-on-one -on -one with you by being inside this group. And the accountability of everybody else, those things, that's the slam dunk that you're, that you're kind of looking for. The other really cool thing too for busy people is like if you are spending a really long time at the gym, then you don't have a lot of extra time to meal plan and focus on that more important aspect of your health and your fitness, right? So let's just say hypothetically, you cut down 30 minutes on the gym, that's 30 minutes that you could be in your kitchen preparing really high quality, healthy meals for when you're busy and you can't be doing that stuff, right? So is your workout routine efficient? And or can it be? Can you save time there? Um, Oh, number five, are you logging every single little thing that you're putting into your body? Okay, so that's a big trap to fall into. And that happens to me too when you get lazy and you start like, you know, grabbing a, a, a chip, potato chip here, grabbing a potato chip there, right? Or like the Halloween candy has just been horrible <laughs> for me and it's just like sitting there and I walk by and I want one. And so, no, that's not stuff I write down, but I know in my head that that's what I've been doing. So I can't say it's not working. I'm not you know, getting there because I know I've been eating candy, you know, and I know it's my fault. So those are things to think about, you know, are, if you're logging, I mean, if you're not logging, you should be logging because that's something that's really going to help you too. I think just writing it on paper makes you feel accountable because you're guilty and you think, I don't want to write it down. You know, I don't want to think that I just ate that. Um, or, you know, it, it tells you, it helps to tell you a story too. Like I ate such and such and I lost weight the next day or I ate such and such and I gained weight the next day, right? So having that log can tell you things and that gives you, uh, it helps you to learn your body too and how your body reacts because maybe your body does really good with chocolate. Who knows, right? So you write that down and you see what happens the next day. Or maybe your body does really good with one piece of chocolate, but with three pieces of chocolate, not so much, right? But but so that's good then because like you're not depriving of yours. You're not depriving yourself. You're learning about yourself and how your body can handle that. Right. 
Um, and the further along you get in your journey, the easier that stuff will become too. Like I am sometimes really surprised about the things that I eat at like a treat meal that don't, don't affect me the next day. But if I do like two days in a row of something like that, I've de I'll definitely gain weight um, or be bloated or whatever, right? So, but that stuff you just learn, right? So logging helps that for sure. So logging every mor morsel. Number six is sleep. Are you getting enough sleep? And this one is so big, you guys, people don't even realize how big sleep is. Um, there was uh, one of our test groups, um, as an example, um, back in January, um, one of our people were, was doing um, the 80 day obsession and they were following everything to a T. Like when you're in one of these test groups, you have to follow the program exactly. You have to follow the nutrition exactly and like do everything that's prescribed to you throughout. There are the supplements, the Shakeology, um, all the different things, the water, all that stuff you need to make sure that you're just like totally on point with everything. And so he was going along and like really being really successful and was losing weight consistently throughout the whole program and I would say it was like maybe four weeks in he like stopped and he had a plateau and the trainer was like well what are you doing and he's like I don't know I'm, I'm eating everything you're I'm supposed to I've been logging it's fine I'm working out everything's going right he said the only thing that he could think of was he had this special like meeting thing happening with with, with his his life and his business that week so he was getting to bed one hour later every single night that week and she said times seven days that's a whole day's worth of sleep that you lost and he was like oh so he like started the next week to go back to his um, regular sleep routine and um what do you know started losing weight again so whether you realize that or not it has a big effect on you so try to make sure that you you know, uh, looking at how many hours you're getting, I think that the minimum is like six to seven. Six would be minimum. Se six put is pushing it for sure. Five, seven is is good. Seven to eight, right, is probably more ideal. Um, but I feel like even if you just go through like a routine where you're winding down at, at a certain time and and that kind of thing, um, that 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 uh, will work for you too. Number seven, water is huge. We talk about water all the time. Um, a lot of times too, you can misconstrue dehydration for being hungry and vice versa so if you're constantly drinking your water and making sure that those are that is getting into your system that's not only going to push things through that's going to um, you know help you to go to the bathroom more it's going to help you to lose weight more it's just going to help you overall be more balanced um, and help with um, you know sustained uh, hunger and all of that kind of good stuff so make sure you're drinking your water number eight yeah. is um, if you have increased muscle mass, and I touched upon this quickly in the beginning, um, you need to make sure that you're feeding that sustainability. So people will often say, you know, they're going to, or they want to, um, you know, uh, their goal is to uh, be toned or to uh, increase that lean muscle. And so you need to make sure that you are eating enough food to sustain those energy levels. The other thing too is if you're not already, um, doing weight training in the gym helps to burn calories more. So your Fitbit might not say that to you, what exactly you're burning. I mean, honestly, this is just a gauge. This is not how, and I point because I have my watch on, this is not really how much calories you burn in a day. This is really just fun for fun, honestly, because there's no real thing out there that can tell you exactly what's going on inside your body when you're working out. There just isn't. You could even go to the doctor and be hooked up to stuff while you're working out, and it still isn't going to calculate all the different things that are happening with your metabolism and everything while you're working out, okay? But I will tell you that if you're incorporating weight weight training, strength training, along with cardiovascular, that the weight training and um, using weights is going to burn uh, calories a lot faster than just cardio um, and I'm going to burn calories throughout the day um, much better than cardio would. Um, so even though we think that we need to you know, get a lot of cardio in to burn, um, it really is all of it, but um, building muscle, sustaining muscle and all of that is going to um, burn a lot more than um, just you know doing regular type workouts in the gym or something like that or X, uh, I was thinking treadmill and elliptical and things like that, right? Um, okay, let's see what we got. 
you know what, don't focus on the scale. That's my number nine. That number does not define you. Um, you need to go also go by taking pictures. You need to go by uh, measuring with a, um, uh, your measuring tape. Um, but don't always let that, um, that number define you. Just because, um, you know, I continued, my body continues to change as I age, and I've weighed the same for years, literally years. There's some some of those pictures that you guys have seen on my website when I was on stage the last time I was 135. That's like 10 pounds difference than I am now. It's nothing, you know. Um, and the fr I don't know, I just feel like it's just so not a, oh, and you know what, if you go onto my like page too, I have this picture, uh, We have the I weigh the same, um, it, was about, it was maybe like a 10 pound difference um, between now and then when I used to eat hundred calorie packs and I was like fluffy looking and that kind of stuff, but I weighed the same. Um, so don't go by the scale. Don't let that number define you. It's definitely a good place to gauge and start off with, but you really need to think about more like your overall health, how you feel, your energy levels, um, and like how you're changing. How do your pants fit? How do your clothes fit? You know, that kind of thing, right? And the last one, and my biggest tip for you guys, is consistency, okay? So, so often somebody starts a plan or program, and they give it a couple of days, and they say it's not working, and then they hear low carb for my friend Susie is working so much better, I'm going to do that, and then they jump on that bandwagon, and they give it like a week or two, and then that's not working, so they don't do that, and then they hear that something else over here is working for this person so I'm gonna try that and if you are not giving it you know a real consistent shot and you're giving it as you know a, a good try you're not gonna see results and you're gonna get frustrated with yourself so you have to be honest with yourself and what it is that you're doing okay um, give me 21 days give me 30 days and I can help you to find that consistent break um, and we'll break through that loss um, together but um, you know I feel like you have to be consistent with it right um, uh, I uh, I feel like um, that happens to me too we're, we're so we want instant gratification right we see one thing we're like squirrel oh that looks good let's go over here you know when we really don't realize remember how I said in the beginning that you know this book was telling me all these different things there's other things to take into consideration um, body type is huge. Most people don't know that there's such thing as having a body type. And those people that are, are doing the keto, they might have a specific body type and that's what, what is working from, for them. Okay. There are other people that are naturally, you know, broad and muscular that need carbs in order to be successful with their weight loss and their health and their fitness. Okay. So that is stuff, all stuff that I can help you guys with. Um, you know, um, but, but it's like I said in the beginning too, um, you know, uh, I, that, that, and that's pretty much what I'm here to help you with is to try to figure out what path is going to be right for you. So we can sit down and I could coach you and we could figure out, um, fill out, you know, the right assessments and, and help me to figure out where you are, what you need, what kind of calories, you, what kind of body type you are, all of that good stuff. And we can get you on the right path. Um, you know, that's one approach. Another approach is to get you set up with a, um, a package where there's a fitness component, where the nutrition component is included, and even some supplementation and nutritionals that are going to help you to get those vitamins and minerals that you're missing, kind of bridge that gap. Because um, we all know that um, you do need supplementation these days, especially this day and age when um, there are so many different um, things in our environment and things in our soil and so if even if you are eating all the right fruits and vegetables in that right combination you're never gonna get the right nutrients that you need in order to be have long-term health it's just not possible with all the things that have happened in today's food sources right um, so there's those things um, for me it's about thinking about the, a big the big picture right overall health and where that's going to take me into the future um, you know I'm interested in making sure that my body continues to function the way that I need it to um, staying away from autoimmune disease diseases, you know, making sure that um, none of those types of symptoms creep up on me as I age. Um, and so um, putting together like a full 
uh, solution for you if you're stuck is, you know, kind of that next step, right? Um, and then if you feel like you have the um, the fitness part down and you're just looking for the nutritional step, we can talk about that. If you feel like you have the nutritional step, but you feel like maybe your fitness could be more efficient or you would like to save more time and be more efficient with, with that aspect, let's talk about that, okay? So I hope that that was really helpful. Um, I am I am just here in this group in order to serve you guys. So um, please let me know what else that it is that you might need. Um, we're working on our planks and our thanks this month. So I'm excited to continue with that. Today was a minute and 10 seconds. It was, it was kind of hard. It's getting hard, um, but we're getting stronger. Um, but I want to make sure that you guys are also fueling for these workouts, right? And your body's not um, losing the energy and pulling it from muscles or organs or things that, you know, that's not good either. So um, let's uh, get together. If you have questions, please let me know. If you want to have a one-on-one -on -one chat, um, I do include a 30-minute uh, complimentary consult for people that I do work with. So um, that's something that we can do together. Um, there are three ways that you can kind of get me you know, to help you, just depending on what your individual goals are, that stuff we can talk one-on-one, -on -one, but you can use me potentially as just coach only, and, um, you know, there's just some hourly fees for that, or um, as a Beach Buddy coach, you guys know that a complimentary part of what I do with our programs and our services is that I coach you through that, so that's kind of a perk to, to doing that. It's a couple different ways to go about that, but I'm here for you in any capacity that you need me. Um, if you have any questions, please let me know. Um, if you want me to clarify anything that I talked about today, I'd be happy to. And I hope you guys are having an excellent Tuesday. Bye.